In this video essay, I will explore how both Vera Chisilova and Tim Burton use the conventions of the surrealistic film movement in their films Daisies and Alice in Wonderland. Although the Czech New Wave film Daisies was filmed in 1966 and the fantasy film Alice in Wonderland was filmed in 2010, both films portray the theme of identity through the perspective of the young female archetypes who are struggling with the societal pressure to conform. The Surrealist film movement began in 1924, evolving from the anti-establishment art movement. The events portrayed in these films operate outside accepted ideologies, bending reality and acting as an extension of one's subconscious. Surrealist filmmakers would often break expectations of filmmaking, including scenes with no logical connection to the story, dream sequences, and unexpected illogical juxtapositions. Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland is a reimagined take on Lewis Carroll's original novels. Alice returns to Underland as an adult who is struggling to live up to societal expectations of Victorian England. As she takes on the challenges of Underland, she learns to accept herself. Alice in Wonderland's narrative has the typical Hollywood three-act structure, which Burton uses to portray the different stages of Alice's emotional growth as she learns to take control of her own destiny. Alice in Wonderland was produced during an era which embraced social change, with the recent election of the first black president of the United States. The third wave of feminism had redefined females as assertive and powerful, and Burton's narrative reflects these new ideologies, rather than the traditional ending where Alice decides to embrace social expectations. Vera Chitilova's film Daisies centers around two women, both named Marie, discovering who they want to be and deciding to embrace the chaos of the world around them, consequently subverting the stereotypes imposed on them by society. Rather than a conventional narrative, the episodic structure of Daisies is filmed as a series of fragmented events. Unlike Burton's Alice, Chitilova does not provide the protagonists with any character development, and in the end, they are punished for their inability to reform. The Czech New Wave films were a response to the dissent against the communist regime and the censorship imposed on the Czechoslovakia since World War II. The films were characterized by an experimental non-conformist attitude which showed subliminal criticism through absurdity, humor, and pathos. Chitilova not only did away from the stereotypes of socialist realism, but also from the formal film conventions. Chitilova aspired to put real life experiences, especially that of women, on screen, and the anarchic spirit of Daisy's protagonists exemplify the rise of feminist dissent. Both Chitilova and Burton bend the rules of reality to portray the protagonist's search for self-identity. The 2010 cultural context of social change is reflected in Alice's character arc, whereas Chitilova reflects the social constraints of the Soviet regime in the futility of the protagonist's rebellious behaviour. Burton symbolises Alice's need to escape the social constraints of being a young female in Victorian England through Alice's journey through the rabbit hole. As she falls, Alice passes a bookcase, a piano, and a bed. These objects are allegories for what was expected of an accomplished Victorian lady, a knowledge of literature and music, and to be a good, subservient wife. Burton uses the chaos of the tea party to portray madness as normal, creating a disturbing panorama through the stylistic dark gothic tone and muted colour and lighting. He uses the illogical juxtapositions of the hair pulling a pocket watch out of a cup of tea, the Mad Hatter's sudden vocal distortion, and nonsensical dialogue to show how Alice should embrace her own madness. Alice's internal transformation is also paralleled by Absalom's transformation from a caterpillar to a butterfly. When a confident Alice starts her adventure to China, Burton places butterfly Absalom on Alice's shoulder, visually pairing the two to represent how Alice has found her purpose and accepted her destiny. In Daisies, Chitilova bends the rules of reality to portray a feeling of estrangement and discord reminiscent of the Marie's feeling of disconnect with society. Her use of narrative discontinuity, abrupt changes to tone and colour palette, disjointed rapid edit photo montages, jump cuts and disparate spatial relations also exemplify the unrepentant chaos perpetrated by the protagonists. Within the Marie's irrational actions and nonsensical dialogue, Chitilova interweaves thought-provoking existential conversations as the girls question their identity. In the scene where the Marie's worry about being unseen, the illogical juxtaposition of their unmoving mouths as the words are spoken directs the comment to the audience, as if both the audience and themselves need to be assured of their existence. Burton uses the audience's pre-existing knowledge of Carol's original tale as a subtext within the film, through the question, is she the real Alice, who had previously visited Wonderland? Burton distorts Alice's physical size to metaphorically represent Alice's struggle with her self-identity. She feels at times too big for childish antics, while simultaneously feeling too small to make her own choices. The Mad Hatter even questions, Why is it you're always too small or too tall? 
alluding to how Alice is expected to change her identity to suit others. Her shrinking is indicative of her resistance to Underland's deterministic logic, her abnormal growth represents her feeling different to others, and she returns to her normal size once she becomes comfortable in her identity. While it might be expected that Alice's abnormal largeness would make it difficult for her to fit in, her disproportionate size allows her to be accepted by the Red Queen in a way that she was never accepted for in Victorian society. Anyone with a head that large is welcome in my court. Unlike Alice, the two protagonists and daisies do not strive for emotional growth, as they feel they have no control over their social identity. Chitalova uses the visual motif of apples and their tendency to go rotten to symbolise the Marie's decision that since society is rotten, they too will go bad. Rather than provide the Marie's with any character arc, Chitalova showcases their unrepentant, chaotic behaviour, even during the film's ending, which obstinately shows them recanting their behaviour and receiving punishment for their transgressions. Chitalova portrays their remorse so satirically that it only further accentuates the film's anti-establishment celebration of destructive chaos. While cleaning up, the Maries continue to smile and their movements remain joyful. Once the task is complete, the two verbally express their happiness at making amends. But Chitalova indicates the falseness of this statement through the girls' faltering smiles. Both Chitalova and Burton portray the antithesis of expected social conventions through surrealistic techniques. Chitalova uses grotesque imagery, illogical juxtapositions, and nonsensical dialogue through the appearance and behavior of the protagonists themselves, whereas Burton uses these surrealistic conventions by placing the protagonist in a dreamlike world which serves as an escape from reality. Burton highlights the fantastical proportions and unsettling distortions of the characters and mise-en-scene of Underland through his use of vibrant, saturated colours and contrastive composition, as well as his use of chaotic and unexpected characters. Things that do not exist in reality are seamlessly integrated to create an overall surrealistic mise-en-scene, without any specific aspects seeming out of place. Every non-human creature is CG animated, and every live-action character in Underland is scaled or manipulated in some way. This is exemplified in the garden scene, where Burton includes all these characters and their animated features along with an almost entirely virtual environment. Burton emphasizes Alice's normalness through her minimalistic makeup, simplistic hairstyle, and clothing. While Burton uses grotesque imagery to visually represent Underland as the antithesis of confined Victorian society, in Daisies, it is the protagonists themselves who do not conform to societal norms. Chitalova introduces the Maries in hyper-feminine outfits in a box camera shot, reminiscent of puppets on a stage. Their doll-like movements juxtapose their future unladylike behaviour and mannerisms. By positioning them like puppets, their arms moving as if they are being pulled by strings and a creaking sound effect accompanying their movements. <coughs> Chitalova portrays the protagonist's feelings of lack of control over their social identity. This lack of control is shown in both Daisies and Alice in Wonderland through the use of locks as a visual representation of feeling trapped within society's expectations and being denied access to certain options or pathways. At the bottom of the rabbit hole, Alice is faced with multiple locked doors. She finds that the key only fits which is inaccessible to her until she drinks a potion to shrink. As she passes through, the door closes and the next shot reveals that the door now leads to nowhere. In Daisies, immediately after the two Maries march in unison chanting We Exist, Chitalova cuts to a rapid edit photo montage of different locks to highlight the social constraints that still exist. Both films use the motif of fragmentation to explore the theme of identity. In Alice in Wonderland, the Red Queen's repeated declaration of off with their head emphasizes the harm in punishing those who do not conform. This is further exemplified through Burton's grotesque use of floating decapitated heads, which Alice must step on to cross the water. Chitalova incorporates fragmentation through a collage showing the separation of appendages as the Maries play with scissors. Through the illogical juxtaposition of body parts floating in the air, Chitalova alludes to how females are often seen as assemblages of female attributes. While Chitalova's use of spatiotemporality in scene transitions adds to the motif of fragmentation, Burton uses a logical juxtaposition in dreamlike transitions between scenes. The transition of the moon into the cat's smile symbolizes how the Cheshire cat watches over Alice during her adventures. And when Alice leaves Underland, Burton focuses on the Mad Hatter's eye, which transitions into a point of view shot of the outline of the rabbit hole. All three protagonists reject the ideas imposed on them by society. Alice rejects the marriage proposal, and the Maries wreak havoc and use deceit to take advantage of old businessmen. Both Daisies and Alice in Wonderland present captivating storylines reflective of their cultural contexts. Themes of femininity and conformity are demonstrated through the surrealistic style and exploration of identity.